Wolf Pack. This is Call of the Wild with Danielle Lewis. Welcome to late night ride, y'all. Oh um, shit, early morning ride. It's 5.30 by now. And I had a lot to think about tonight, so I waited till late to do this. Um, link below. The cringiest Kyle Kalinske video ever made. And the moment I saw the title of this video, I knew that he owned himself. So I wanted to see where he went with it. Now, uh, the video below is Kyle Kalinske's take on what happened to Milo Yiannopoulos in New York. Uh, the DSA, the Democratic Socialists of America, New York chapter, walked into a bar, not a joke, and saw Milo Yiannopoulos. And they decided that as a group they were going to shout at him, Nazi scum, get out, until he was so uncomfortable that he got the fuck out. <laughs> I see nothing wrong with this. Absolutely not. Um, but even in the opening of, of the video, you can see that Kyle is uncomfortable with this entire situation. Because in the past, and I'm surprised I didn't mention this in my last video, but in the past, when SJWs go out and shame people publicly for the things that they have said and done... Kyle has come out and said, hey, you know, don't do that. You know, they have a right to speak, so you shouldn't, you know, shame them for what they say. Well, Kyle isn't stating their opinion about the other person's opinion, also free speech. Yes. So, right there, you know, lately Kyle's been talking about his free speech absolutism, but in the past... When it comes to his own side, the left, well, I really don't consider SJWs left, but they think they are. So, when it comes to his side, Kyle completely shits the bed on his free speech absolutism. He has absolutely no problem going out there and defending Richard Spencer, Alex Jones, and Milo Yiannopoulos, but when it comes to the reaction, as long as it's, even if it's nonviolent, Kyle doesn't think that they should face any repercussions. And this is, this is something that I tried to get through in the comment section. Because people are on this free speech absolutist kick. Now, first of all, free speech only protects you from the government. It doesn't protect you from the mob. Now, when you're on your little computer or on your Xbox headset screaming out the N-word or screaming out any other type of racist or any other minority profanities, you're protected by a certain level of removal from the situation. When you go out in public, you would never say those same things because someone might have a violent reaction. So people need to stop acting like you are protected once you step out from behind your computer, okay? There are real world repercussions for the things that you say and do. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. That is reality. And you can't expect people to not have a reaction when they see you in public. And that's another thing. How he's like, I, uh, I call them out in an appropriate circumstance, not while they're sitting there eating. Kyle, when are they ever going to see that motherfucker again? That is their only opportunity to see that motherfucker. How many fucking famous or wish they were famous people that you know that you see all the fucking time? It doesn't happen. It's going to be your only time to face to face express yourself to that motherfucker but you don't think people should do that Kyle if free speech is absolute then maybe you want, might want to stop shaming your own side while on the same time defending the other side because right wingers will never afford you the same courtesy and Charlottesville is a perfect example of this. You have a clear-cut 
divide. You have right-wingers, well, Nazis, expressing themselves in a public forum with left-wing counter-protesters on the other side. Remind me which side killed someone that day, Kyle. Right-wingers don't like free speech. They will never afford you the same courtesy to speak your mind without a violent reaction. But a left-winger can have a non-violent verbal reaction, and that's not okay either. So Kyle, what you're saying is we should keep all of our political discussions in the form of texts and never interact in real life. Well, that's never going to happen. That's not reality, Snowflake. This is what happens when you step out of your studio, when you step out from behind your fucking computer, when you step out from behind your fucking microphone. You face reality and the real world consequences of what you say and do. Yes, consequences. Right wingers heads in the comments fucking exploded over that one word, consequences. There are consequences to everything. Your mother should have taught you that. Everything you do has repercussions, has consequences. When you're safely holed up inside your house, behind your computer, or on your Xbox headset, you can say whatever you want. And as long as you don't step out of your house, you will never face the consequences of that. But once your ass steps out into the fucking sunlight and faces the mob, there are consequences to what you say and do. So stop acting like internet life is separate from real life. All the internet is affords you just a little bit of distance to say your terrible things. But once you step out into the fucking sunlight, you have to face the consequences. And that's just reality. You can't wish that away. Okay, people are going to have a, an opinion, whether it agrees with him or disagrees with them, and they do have the right to express it. Not just right-wingers, but left-wingers too. So, hey, Kyle, how about getting back on our side here? Stop defending Richard Spencer and Milo Yiannopoulos while in the same fucking breath shaming left-wingers that are actually out there trying to get this fucking shit to go away. No, Nazism does not have a place in our society. Communism does not have a place in our society. These are two on opposite sides of the spectrum that don't work. The answer is somewhere in the middle, but it's not the mainstream middle. It's the global middle. So how about getting back on our side, Kyle? Because you completely shit the bed on your free speech absolutism nonsense to defend Richard Spencer and Milo Yiannopoulos while also shaming your own side for their free speech.